the end of the day. But uh, anyway, we've always been there in June. We've never been there in the, in the winter months. Hey, Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. We're continuing our Field Day 2020 in Retrospect series with an interview with WB6ADC. This was a lot of fun to talk to her because she really got excited about this Field Day. Hey, if you think of it, click down there and subscribe. We'll send you notifications when there's new videos out. With that, let's join Wendy. This is Stu, AG6AG, and we're with WB6ADC. That's Wendy. And uh, Wendy, so, so great of you to join us today. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, let's see, I, I was just curious, how long have you had your license? I was first licensed in 2015, and that year I just kept up with the momentum because through CBARC, our local ham radio club, they offer uh, classes, and I was advised, look, once you get the your first uh, license, your entry-level technician, keep the momentum going, which was a smart thing to do. So by the end of the year, I had earned my amateur extra license. Wow, okay. Yeah. And so the, my next question was, what class do you hold? But you already got it. So yeah. that's great. <laughs> so amateur extra. So do you do a lot of HF? Uh, well, that's primarily what I do. I'm pretty limited in uh, what equipment I can use right now. I have a Yesu handheld. It's a nice uh, transceiver. It really is a nice piece of gear. And another club member very, has very kindly loaned me for the duration um, a freestanding antenna, which was wow. fantastic for use during field day. Uh, it really helped me to uh, make it quite a few contacts throughout Ventura County. And I was able to hear some other hams who were transmitting from Los Angeles, a couple from LAX. They have, there's both LA and LAX. And at least one gentleman from San Diego. They couldn't hear me, unfortunately, but... You know, they were pretty clear. I was really impressed with that setup. So it's field days, uh, just working on my own, has really given me uh, a tremendous appreciation for what ham radio can really do. Great. Um, so was this like the first field day you participated in, period? Or did you participate in previous field days? I have participated in other field days. I have to say the first field day I participated in, I was a teenager. And uh, that one was, I don't remember the years, early 1980s, but uh, I went up to Rasno Peak with my dad, who sadly is a sign key, but he was very active in field day activities at the time. Uh, so that was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, but I have participated in field day as a licensed ham for the past few years. And this is obviously this year has been very different for everyone. We've had to work individually. Uh, but with the help of the Elmers and anyone who's willing to step in, all, a lot of questions, a lot of problems have been worked out. Uh, but uh, previously, of course, we would meet at, I believe it was Meadows Elementary School. Uh, uh, Maple. Nice Maple. Or Maple, pardon me. Maple Elementary School. Very nice setup. I like to see the neighbors drop by and say, hey, what's going on over here? You know, and, right. and just folks just stepping in to see what it is that we do. Oh, and I think my video froze. Oops. Oh, no, <laughs> oh there we good. go. No, we're you're back. Good. You're good. I <laughs> okay. still got you. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. So did this year meet your expectations? I mean, obviously, it's a, it was a lot different. You're absolutely yes. right. But um, all in all, did it meet the expectations of what you thought this field day was going to be? Um, I try not to have too many preconceived ideas as to or limitations as to what how would happen I really didn't know because again I'm just working with this little handheld right but I would say I'm overall I'm so pleased at how it turned out and as I understand it I believe that across the country field day has had a record number of participants I think given the current situation it's really driven home to the amateur radio community how important this form of communication is so for me personally it was very satisfying. It really was. And I loved the meetings we had beforehand with club members, just, hey, let's just sort things out, get any questions. That was very, very helpful. It was a very friendly community. 
And then afterward, when we touched base, I said, hey, how'd you do? How'd it go? So I, and I was very encouraged to hear from uh, folks who have, uh, if they were mobile or if they were home using their, uh, their nice setups at home, how many contacts they were able to make. That was very encouraging. Well, you know, um, you did participate in uh, uh, the Terry, Terry Graves Memorial, which is absolutely yes. awesome, um, uh, in the HT class. And uh, you took second place. I saw that. Yeah, that yes. was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Lindsay, that was a nice little bonus. Lindsay, yeah, she, she, I guess, was an animal on this one. She and rocked it. I, I, I was, I, I just, when I was reading the results and who, who uh, placed where, I just had a big smile on my face, as pleased as punch. I thought, this is what it's all about. I think uh, that initiative really helped to uh, bring, just bring to bear within our local camp community, hey, Get out your little HE, whatever it is you have. I even saw that there was a boat anchor class. Yeah, that was pretty darn yes. cool. <laughs> Absolutely, but and he just... got two QSO, two QSOs, <laughs> right? I and I found that funny. That was James KK six YAM, and uh, uh, all in all, I I would agree. I really think that the whole VHF initiative that was a super big success, mm -hmm. and um, I have never in any field day seen as many two meter connections, two meter QSOs done by so many people. Um, right. And I was gonna ask you, you know, I mean, it was like a shotgun start at 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had Elmers, you had uh, uh, base station operators, you had people on HTs, you had mobile units out there, right. all listening on VHF. Um, how was that? Did Was that intimidating at all at the start of that? Well, uh, I wouldn't say it was intimidating. What, what has helped me is that I did participate in field days in the past with our club, and it is very active the first couple hours. Um, and so I know that there's a lot of activity with all the different stations that we would have set up and all the different methods of radio communication. It's It's very, very busy. Uh, I was just excited. I thought, okay, this is great because people are coming through loud and clear. This is fantastic. I just have to be patient. It's, and and I, one way to rehearse for this, if you will, was uh, checking in for the nets. You have to be patient. Sometimes you'll double. Uh, I remember this last night, for example, I thought, my gosh, why can't they hear me? I can hear everybody else, but you just have to be patient, keep trying, right. and eventually you get in the queue. So, that's what I did for field day. In fact, my first uh, QSO was with Adrian and I was absolutely thrilled. I thought, this is a guy I know. This is great. <laughs> so I happily wrote it down. I, I, at one point I did have my laptop out in the backyard, but I figured oh, it's just easier for me to write it down. That's, I'll do old school. That's okay. Uh, but it wasn't intimidating at all. Um, and then once, uh, you know, I just started going up and down the channels and listening and I would call uh, CQ field day. And it was, it was really thrilling. You just have to be patient. It's kind of like fishing. <laughs> yes. Especially, much. yeah, especially if the, um, as the day goes on, the atmospheric uh, propagation isn't as great, you know, it, but it does pick up by evening. So it's, it's really a thrill when you get a bite, as it were, if at least you can hear somebody that, hey, somebody's out there on that channel. That's, that to me was very exciting. So it was just me out in the backyard, you know, yeah. this, yeah, this fantastic homebrew antenna and my my Yesu. <laughs> there you go. Well, you yeah. know, it's it's funny. They uh, the the so called experts are saying that yes, uh, we're at the bottom of the solar cycle. It's no place to go but up from here. We'll see. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, I I heard that last year too. So. Uh, and it just keeps going down. So I'm hoping we've hit yeah. the bottom now and we're going to be uh, up on Solar Cycle 25. But, uh, you know, we shall see. Um, so there was a lot of other stuff that was done countywide. We, we managed to get all the clubs to kind of work together for all the different things. With Did you take advantage of any of the real-time scoring or anything like that? Um, I did not. I pretty much just, uh, it, it, I, I just focused on what I was doing. I did go online to check a couple of times, but it really wasn't until after the contest 
was over and then I was logging my own results and I think I kind of poked around and say, hey, what, what else is going on? But I was, uh, now that you mentioned other clubs in the area, I was just thrilled to see uh, all the different organizations that have been participating. And like I was saying earlier, listening to all these other contacts from throughout Ventura County and down into LA, it was, it was fantastic. Great. Um, how about, um, you know, the, um, uh, there was a lot of effort put in on the lead up up to field day in order to get questions answered yeah. and all the, you know, what we affectionately call Elmarine and the hobby. Um, were you able to take a, a good advantage of that? Was the Zoom meetings, the Wednesday Zoom meetings that were kind of dedicated to that, were those helpful? Uh, just, you know, a general idea. Yeah. I would say that I think it was a fantastic idea. First of all, just to see these friendly, familiar faces. <laughs> it's like, hey, civilization still exists, right? <laughs> <Such as this. laughs> Maybe that's an exaggeration. But um, I did like to listen to the exchanges going back and forth, even if it didn't uh, pertain in particular to my station. That's still fine. I love to hear how people give uh, suggestions, um, some ideas, questions, answers back and forth. And that to me speaks volumes right there. Uh, so yeah, I think it was it was very valuable to have these Zoom meetings, these Zoom sessions, and just emails going back and forth. And even uh, uh, during the nets, uh, like we always do, uh, hey, you've got some questions? Can anybody answer this for me? So that's the, however the communication is. It's it is vital to keeping uh, just keeping us going and and uh, just taking advantage and being able to use the equipment we have to the best of our ability. Well, that's, and that's absolutely, you know, and, and we have to always bear in mind that field day is not a contest. Hi, hi. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but one of, one of the, one of the funnier things that I found was that, uh, you know, it actually is an emergency preparedness event. And uh, we really had a lot of people stretch that envelope out with, uh, you know, uh, getting the battery bonuses and all the rest of the stuff that as individuals, you know, going out there, seeing how long something would last without a charge mm -hmm. and without power, you know, and all that stuff. So I found that really interesting. Oh, um, well, definitely when we we're, we're in the middle of a conversation and the battery, yeah, <laughs> says, right. I'm, I'm yeah. done. <laughs> so that was, you know, that was something that it would have been on my mind for quite some, hey, I really ought to get a spare battery. And what's this uh, battery, pa alkaline battery pack I hear about? So guess what? Guess what Wendy needs to do now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that order in. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and in speaking of uh, emergency preparedness, we have the great shakeout. I believe it's uh, the 13th one that uh, Southern California will be participating in. Uh, that just drives it home how you never know. Yeah, I've got flashlight batteries and we're all good with water and et cetera. But what about my communications gear? Yes. So I, those extra batteries, anything else you might need, it's really important to have those on hand and to uh, periodically check them. Just set a, a little skit, a reminder, check your gear, make sure everything's in working order. So, cause we never know. Right. And obviously out here, we deal with earthquakes, brush fires and such, but there are other parts of the country, they've got their own situations to deal with. Uh, it'd be seasonal weather, uh, severe weather conditions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and anything can happen. Anything. Yeah. Well, and that's and that's what we're seeing. We and we also see man-made disasters. I mean, uh, the uh, explosion that took place in Beirut. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, um, although that is many, many uh, distant miles from us, uh, that could happen any place. You know, and that's a reality. And you know, uh, it doesn't just destroy infrastructure. But it also wipes out power and it wipes out right. communications and cell networks and everything else. And um, that's where we do amateur radio. Uh, yeah. So uh, there, I, I have a, 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 a question that relates a little bit to what I did. How, how were the videos? Did you have an opportunity to watch any of those? I did. Um, and th your videos were very helpful, uh, very very friendly and very informative and i did poke around i did see some other field day videos from a couple of years past and some are some are more current hey this is what i'm doing this year yeah and particularly for the current videos everyone said it's different this time 
we have to adapt to that. And so this is what I'm going to do. So that was very helpful to me, very useful. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Um, now, during the actual event, we had the Zoom meetings, go, uh, a Zoom meeting going on that was 26 hours long. My God. I don't know how <laughs> Brad did Zoom. that. You know, I, I mean, I think I popped in at like 4.30 in the morning and you had two guys working and then there was people out there, you know, you know, <laughs> no um, amount of caffeine will, will counter that, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, did, did you take advantage of the Zoom meeting at all? Did you pop in and out uh, at any time or ask questions? Um, I actually held off of the Zoom meetings that occurred during the event, but that was on, it was on my mind. I knew, well, if I, if I need to, I will. Uh, but what I did do is I checked in with our, our Bozo net, our, our, net, our local net on Bozo, and just to say, hey, give me a, give me a signal check, see, let's see how things are going. So that was, that was kind of nice. That's like uh, going back to your home base and taking a breather. And it was nice to hear, and Zach, Heaven bless him. You know, he's, <laughs> I don't think he ever sleeps during field day, honestly. He was there. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it, it's interesting because some of our post-meeting stuff, we talked about the activity on the uh, – on the repeaters is being well you know it was there but not many people have taken it took advantage of it and all this and every single person that i have interviewed has mm -hmm. said oh yes we were on there asking questions it yes. was mm -hmm. great even more you know so than kind of the zoom meetings for the people that i've interviewed so mm -hmm. i found that really really interesting you know yeah. um so although we all worked alone uh, did you kind of feel like it, there was some cohesion and kind of the same sort of, uh, for a lack of better words, uh, camaraderie uh, that yeah. we would have at a shared field day event? Absolutely. I, I think I felt it even more strongly this time. I felt like people were, even though physically we had to, we obviously were, were really spread out, but I really think a lot of folks came together to make this work. Um, not just for the sake of having a successful field day, but really proving the worth of amateur radio. I really do. I, I just, uh, it just really, I mean, I'm going to sound sappy, but it really warms my heart to know that because every, every voice I heard, particularly from uh, the folks in our, in CBAR, that was absolutely fantastic to hear. That let me know that everyone's doing fine. Everybody's participating. Uh, and, as we were saying, you know, the Elmers are out there answering questions, helping folks out with little issues that might come up with their radios. Uh, that just meant a great deal to me. So I feel like it, it brought everybody uh, that much closer, really. All right. Well, that's cool. I mean, it really is because that was the goal. That's what I think everybody was trying to put together that was involved mm -hmm. this year. Um, you know, leading up, I, I will tell you that the majority of the questions that actually got asked uh, in the uh, Zoom meetings had to do with, well, what class am I? What category am I? What am I? I'm operating this way. I'm going to have a swizzle stick as an antenna coming out the side of my ear. You know, does yeah. that make me affordable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the very, those are valid questions. Yeah. You want to make sure that you are reporting yourself correctly. And, and I got all that sorted out before field day. So I, right, I was good. Right. Well, uh, and that was the thing. We did a lot of questions and answers before field day. Um, I know that you um, uh, have taken uh, advantage of the board net, um, which is something else that we're going to talk about in the future, um, which, God, four nets a day. How do you do that, right? <laughs> uh, you know, but all the way up to field day, we were doing four nets a day, seven days a week. Uh, with all sorts of different, um, you know, check-ins and comments and everything else, did uh, were you able to take advantage of any of uh, any of those uh, board nets and take advantage of any of the Elmarine in there uh, pre-event? Uh, yeah, I did listen in and uh, just again, just picking up tips, ideas, um, and that all of that I I like to think of a skill set as being a toolbox and I keep filling up my toolbox with things that I'm learning uh, and that's 
it just sharing that information is extremely helpful. It's very important to us as hams because we're always learning. So however, whenever the nuts are scheduled, the more, particularly for an event like field day, the more we have, the better. I know it really takes up time, although we seem to have quite a bit of time these days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but uh, that communication, that sharing of information is absolutely vital. You know, it's really funny that you mentioned toolboxes. Um, I happen to call it the bag of tricks and that oh. Felix the cat has nothing oh, yeah. on us, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that yeah. gives away my age a little bit, but uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I will. Uh, that's how I, I like to think of skill sets as toolboxes and that, right. that term I've used um, since I was in college. I have a degree in mathematics and I always felt that the skills that I was learning to become a mathematician that was filling up a toolbox and occasionally right. I'd have to size up the toolbox, you know, right. uh, but that's true for any activity we have. If it's the simple and mundane to something that's more advanced, Absolutely. you have to, you have to reach into your toolbox or you like to say bag of tricks, right. whatever, however you want to call it. And it's a way to compartmentalize all the skills that we've learned. And sometimes you have to kind of dust off some of those right. skills you haven't used in a while. But, right. right. <laughs> or well, maybe you need to, re to revamp them. You learn something new. Something. I, new. I hate to say this, but every once in a while I have to go back to a video that I've made to remember the settings for a particular program. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I don't have them written down anywhere. And I know what um, they are. And I can look yeah. and, okay. Why did I know I changed this, but I don't remember why. And I can go back and look at why I set that. But uh, anyway, all right. Is there anything that I haven't touched on that you want to share? I think we've pretty much covered all the bases. Um, again, I just want to say that I am so encouraged by all of the traffic that I heard on this field day event and as well as the camaraderie, all of the uh, helpful hints and the tips that people shared leading up to it. And as well as uh, kind of like the roundup afterward, uh, just, uh, just sharing, hey, how do things work out for you? And then seeing all of the scores. As, when I logged my scores, you know, even though it's, it's a very modest number, I thought, I'm on that list. And then I would look to see how other people did very, very encouraging. And I, I really hope that this has this, the way this event had to play out this year uh, has really drawn more people closer to the hobby. And I, I believe I mentioned this on the net the other night. There are so many instances where if, if it's an article I'm reading or some, or a, uh, a remark I see online, so many people say, oh my gosh, you know what, I better get my amateur radio license. And they get, they get all set up, they get um, a nice little HT unit, and they put it away. I right. can't tell you how many times I've come across that comment. I thought, well, what good is that going to do? And they know that it isn't. They have to learn how to use that. They have to put it into practice. And field right. day is the, one of the best ways you can learn how to use it. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much. Thank you, Stu. And yes. uh, it was really great talking to you. Uh, and... For now, I think that's it. Well, it sure was nice interviewing Wendy, and I thank her very much for spending the time to talk to us. Uh, we'll be continuing this series, but again, don't forget to subscribe and check the like button if you like the video. Oh, and of course, questions, comments, or anything else, go ahead and put them down there in the comments. Thanks again. This is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73, and hope to hear you on the air.